Okay, I'm making a short recording for you guys on how we do the hardness of water calculations for lab seven. So let's look at the data you collected in lab seven. The data we have are the volume of the tap water tested, which is set at 25.0 milliliters. The initial volume of the titrate burette and the final volume of the titration burette. So these are the values that you get from the images. So this will be the initial to the final volume. And remember, titration burettes are graded from zero down to 50 at the bottom of them because you're actually measuring how much volume you use, not how much volume is in there. And you also need the concentration of the known solution. So this is 0 0.01 molar EDTA. The whole idea of a titration is to use a solution you know to determine the concentration of a solution you don't know. In this case, that's going to be the concentration of the calcium in the water. Right. So our next step, let's look at an example run. So first thing we got to do is determine the volume of the known solution we used. So this we're going to get from the images. We're going to have the volume final and then subtract the initial volume. So I'm just going to use an example set of data. So let's say in this run, my final volume was 20.3 milliliters and my initial volume was 10.5 milliliters. Because remember, again, this is graduated from zero down to 50. So my initial value will be smaller than my final value. So if I have 20.3 as my final and 10.5 as my initial, it's a simple calculation to figure out that the volume I used was 9.8 milliliters. Right? So this tells me how much of the known solution I used to titrate the 25 milliliters of the unknown. So the next step is to use that and the known concentration to determine how many moles of EDTA you used. So the concentration of the EDTA is 0 0.01 molar, which means it's 0 0.01 moles of EDTA per liter. Since we know the molarity of the EDTA and we know the volume of the EDTA used, we can rearrange the equation for molarity to determine the moles used. So the calculation is pretty straightforward. On the left here is a normal molarity calculation. 0 0.01 molar EDTA is equal to X number of moles per volume used. I can rearrange that equation since I know the volume and I know the molarity. I can move the volume over so that it's the molarity times the volume equals the moles of EDTA that I used in the system. So if we apply this to the data we got in the last slide, we take 0 0.01 molar EDTA times, now here, this is a common mistake, note, I had to convert my milliliters into liters. So 9.8 milliliters, divide that by 1,000, you get 0 0.0098 liters. So 0 0.01 times 0 0.0098 liters gives me 0 0.000098 moles of EDTA. It's a very small amount, but that's how many moles of EDTA I use to neutralize the calcium in my water sample. So from that, I can determine how many moles of calcium carbonate I have in the water sample. And this is pretty straightforward, because if we look at the equation for the reaction, we said that a calcium ion is bound up by an EDTA to form this EDTA calcium complex. The calcium ion on its own causes the indicator to be one color, that kind of purpley color. And then when it's bound in EDTA, the color of the system turns to blue. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship between these two. So since I know it's a one-to-one -one relationship, I know that if I had 0.000, zero i think nine eight moles of edta that means i also have 0 0.000098 moles of calcium carbonate in the system because i had to use the exact amount of edta necessary to eliminate all the calcium so this is how i get my moles of calcium carbonate the next step is to convert that to how many grams of calcium carbonate that represents well this is a pretty straightforward molar mass calculation in the pre-lab, you calculated the molar mass of calcium carbonate to be 100.09 grams per mole. And this is just showing you the calculation for that. Using that and the number of moles I just calculated in the previous slide, I can determine the mass of calcium carbonate. 
because the mass of calcium carbonate is going to be equal to the moles of calcium carbonate times the molar mass. So I have my moles, 0 0.000098 moles, times my molar mass, 100.09 grams per mole. Moles cancel and end up with 0 0.009809 grams of calcium carbonate. So now I know the mass of calcium carbonate in the sample. My next step is to determine the concentration in terms of grams per liter. How many grams per liter of calcium carbonate are in that sample? Well, I need to know a couple of things. I need to know my calculated mass, which I just figured out, and I need to know the volume of the sample. Now, the volume of each of the samples was set at 25.0 milliliters. I can then convert that, because note, it says it wants it grams per liter, so I got to convert 25 milliliters into liters. Again, you just divide it by 1,000. There are 1,000 milliliters per liter. That gives you 0 0.025 liters. So it's pretty straightforward calculation. Grams per liter, 0 0.009809 grams divided by 0 0.025 liters means that I have 0.3924 grams per liter of calcium carbonate. So in my little 25 milliliter solution, there were 0.3924 grams per liter. However, we typically don't report water hardness as grams per liter. We typically report water hardness as parts per million, which is milligrams per liter, right? So this goes back to your studying for the chapter uh, six on various forms of concentration. Parts per million is milligrams per liter. So my conversion factor is 1000 milligrams to the gram, right? So then it's a fairly straightforward calculation. What are my milligrams per liter? Well, I calculate that I have 0.3924 grams per liter. I multiply that by 1000 milligrams per gram. Grams cancel out, leaves me in milligrams per liter. And I come out to 392.4 parts per million. I will then compare that number to the table in the lab exercise and determine how hard my water is based on that value. So hopefully this helps you do the calculations a little bit better in this next section.